Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Crafts Couch Pod. If you tuned in last week, you know that I was talking about a little bit of the burnout that I had been experiencing and how I was really starting to enjoy the gift of space. And wow, I feel really good. <laughs> like mentally, I haven't felt this good in a long time, I would say. So I wanted to share a little bit about the things I've been choosing that have really made a difference. So going back a little bit to like, I don't know, pandemic times, I would say, when, you know, the world was on fire and we didn't know what was happening. At that time, I was still working at the VA and, you know, everything was shutting down. It was just very strange times. And part of me wanting to lean into coping was to do some really long meditations in the morning. I had been doing, you know, short 10, 15 minute meditations on and off in the mornings right when I woke up because I did notice an overall mood improvement with that like significantly. So I just really dialed up that practice. Specifically, I was doing Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations. And these, if you've done them before, they're like an hour to two hours. They're very long. Well, I woke up early enough and just did that before I started my day from home, working from home. And I started to notice that that just really, really improved my mood and my creativity and all these things. So we're, we're looking back at 2020. And then I'm not even too sure what happened, but I just kind of fell out of the practice. I fell out of the practice. You know, it is a, a lengthy commitment in the morning. And I think I just thought, well, you know, I've done the programming. I've done lots of programming and I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need to do that anymore. I can do other energy things, right? And so this is when I started to kind of really dive deep into access consciousness. Now, access, access consciousness, if you want to know more about it, you can go to accessconsciousness.com. There's it's this huge modality and body of work. And I just really got into getting my bars run and just going to those classes and really started to kind of put my energy into that. So I kind of just let meditation go by the wayside. And I started, you know, waking up right away in the morning and checking my social media and not doing the original things, which were don't look at my phone in the morning and go straight into meditation and really, really focus on reprogramming. And it wasn't until, you know, as I was mentioning last time, just a lot of contraction around the business, around my emotional state, around my creativity, that it kind of got my attention that whatever I was currently choosing was not working. Now, here's the thing. You can do all of the things and it still not be working for you, right? It's like, I've learned all the things. I implement them, you know, depending on the season of my life. And so I think there was something that I kind of got blinded by where it was like, well, I'm still doing other things. Why do I not feel my best, right? I feel like I'm doing enough, but perhaps it is not the things that really I know change the game for me. And so in my mm, capacity or in my enjoyment of the space over the past couple weeks, I really started to actively, really actively reprogram. And this is where my recent masterclass software update came from because I was like, oh, this is something Although I understood subconscious reprogramming from one vantage point many years ago, it just now landed at this whole other embodied level. And so that kind of what inspired that class. Now, I just knew it was something and I was starting to notice subtle changes, but it really wasn't until like the past couple days that I've noticed like drastic emotional and energetic shifts. And if you follow my work, part of what I talk about is be, do, have, which is 
a term from neurolinguistic programming, which just means you need to be something energetically before you can have the reality. So this is like manifestation 101, right? You can't do the things or figure it out. You have to energetically be it. So I got really excited because I was like, I need to share this because energetically, I just feel so, so different. And so as I mentioned last time, like I kind of cut some things out to just simplify and get back down to basics. So I want to share a little bit about kind of what I've been doing specifically. Um, So you have an idea of my process. And if you are wanting more of the how to's and like, make sure you know how to do it yourself, then I would say the software update masterclass is the jam. That's where to go. It's in my, um, it's in my, what's it called? Vault, if you will, the couch. It's where I house all my old classes and programs and whatnot. Um, So besides creating a lot of space, I started to just really dial up on the practices that I've known forever, right? Which is really taking advantage of the times in the morning, like right when you wake up, or right before you go to sleep in the evening, because those are prime reprogramming times. Now, certainly we want to stay on top of it throughout the day so that our mind doesn't go haywire, so to speak. But I just got so clear in the past week or two about what Abraham Hicks talks to about us being lazy (laughs) with our minds, right? Just kind of letting them run rampant. I mean, I think of it like if you just you know, dropped off a litter of puppies in your home and just let them go crazy. And they're like peeing and pooping all over the place and they're chewing on furniture, right? And you're not training them at all. You're going to have a mess, right? And your mind is the same. And so this is where it really clarified for myself that we do need this subconscious reprogramming work like hygiene, right? Because our ego is naturally looking for problems to solve. And so kind of our like default hardware wiring is to look for problems or perhaps lean more towards pessimism, right? And a lot of our world is, you know, reflecting that. And so it actually does require us to be empowered and take self-accountability to choose something else. So my really simple routine, I would say, because to me, it's like, it's got to be doable and feel good. And I will caveat this with this process is really uncomfortable at first, right? And it's just kind of needing to continue to choose it, right? Until you start to get those little like spaces of oh bliss. And you're like, that's it. It's there. Okay. I can start to strengthen that more and more. I've noticed this process as similar to since I've been re-engaging in fitness as well. For many, many years, I was just kind of using walks and light weights and maybe little at-home workouts as my fitness routine. And then this year, I just got the you know, emotional ping that it was time to step it up. At 40, it was time to step it up. And so I would say end of August, I started going to almost daily, either yoga, Legree, Pilates, whatever. And every, I don't know, every so often, maybe eight weeks in or three months in, or now almost six months in, I notice different levels of strength come on board, right? So it's like within a couple weeks, I noticed a change, right? But maybe not the first day, maybe I was just like supremely sore and weak, but like it took a couple weeks. And so I want you to keep that in mind that in the beginning of these practices, you might not feel good, right? It's just kind of like, keep choosing it, keep choosing it until you kind of get past the point of getting the puppy house broken, right? If you've had a dog, you know, it actually takes quite a long time. Like, I don't know. I think I'm trying to think of Bucky. It took Larry like a good eight months till we were not having any accidents in the house. And he's a smaller dog. And you know, this was like, 13 years ago and like all what I knew with training animals, but it takes some time and it won't take that much time for your mind. Research has shown that it takes about two months. So eight weeks of active reprogramming until they see physical structures in the brain, um, changes in the brain. Um, This is kind of an old data that, so I'm wondering if things have changed, but my, you know, the last time that I looked at this, that's what said. And it felt like 
to me, even in my personal experience, that it can take a, a fair amount of time. So all I say with that is to be patient with yourself. Be patient. So the first thing that I started doing actively was like right when I wake up is, and I believe I mentioned this a little bit on the spacious one too, is to listen to some binaural beats and focus on emptying my mind, just empty my mind. And what do I mean by that is just a light visualization of allowing the thoughts to drift away or be suctioned out of my head or be dumped out like a trash can on the lake. Like you can get creative with it. Just what does it take? And so it might look like you focusing your attention to the sound of the binaural beats or, you know, focusing on the visualization of you dumping out the thoughts in your head. And you likely, unless you're a monk, you likely won't have 10 to 15 minutes of pure sustained attention. It will likely be a second, five seconds, maybe as you progress, 10 seconds, right? So what does that mean? It means you're going to be redirecting your mind, like the puppy, back to what your focus is. That is your rep, right? That's you lifting the weight at the gym, strengthening the muscle is every time you redirect your attention back. Same with bringing the puppy. Ooh, you see them doing a little circle and you you bring them to the pee pee pad or you bring them outside, right? It's like the same idea. So... I get that a lot of folks have kind of misconceptions about meditation and this why it becomes challenging. Now, certainly if you're quite dysregulated, you might not be able to do this. You might really need somatic tools right away in the morning, right? If you wake up with anxiety, you need something somatic. So this is when you're already, you know, you're kind of like low to maybe moderately dysregulated that you could do this. So I'm starting with this for like 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Then I go into like a 20 minute more active visualization. So this is maybe guided visualizations where it's just seeking to cultivate an energy of, you know, relaxation or luxury or health or abundance or whatever, right? And coming from this kind of generalized space to just cultivate these really good feeling frequencies. So you can see that the like, The dump the thoughts one is actually quite short, 10 to 15 minutes. So you could probably be good with that. And if you are craving more, then maybe you'll want to jump into like a visualization next, right? It's kind of like follow what you feel called to do, right? I'm sharing my process just to give you an example, but that doesn't mean this is the exact right thing you should choose. I just know from time in the past that this really created a difference for me. So I wonder what it would create for you. I then, after that, depending on, you know, if I start to kind of get bored, it's like, okay, time to be done with that. And then I go into just some quick journaling. I have one of those, um, gosh, now I can't even think of the name of it, but it's like, like a digital notepad, so to speak, that I can write on. So I just write out things that I'm wanting to experience for the day, right? I'm kind of intending setting the tone for the day. Specifically, Abraham Hicks will call this segment intending, which means like we're writing down or we're focusing our attention about what we want to experience for the next segment that we're going to experience. So for me, I'm just looking at the day as a whole, like this morning, um, it's Sunday and Super Bowl Sunday specifically. And so I just looked at something really general about well, wouldn't it be nice to just experience just a a lovely, relaxing and creative Sunday? I really don't have a lot going on. So I wonder what I could create. I wonder how much fun I could have with creation. And wouldn't it be nice to just enjoy a long salt bath and enjoy this spacious day since the next week's going to be busy and then I'm going to be traveling. And so I wonder how much enjoyment and pleasure I can squeeze out of today. What would be really fun for me? What would be nice to choose, right? Kind of just some general questions to stir up the emotion. So I'm starting to rampage a little bit, so to speak. This is what Abraham Hicks calls it. Now I know I'm using Abraham Hicks name a lot. And if you aren't familiar, just go to YouTube and type in that name, Abraham Hicks, and you will find tons and tons of 
um, videos on them. Basically, they are a non-embodied entity, so a group of spiritual beings that Esther Hicks channels, and she has been channeling this information since the early 80s. And it's just such amazing wisdom and frequencies. Tune in for yourself and see how it resonates. But the idea that we're really training the mind the same way that we're training our nervous systems, training our bodies, right? So that I'm actively setting it into motion and momentum in the direction that I desire, in the direction that is going to create more for me, right? Because it's like when we go into a lot of momentum about negative things, it can ramp up really fast. It's like a truck driving downhill and it takes a second to slow it down and make the turn, right? So when you're going fast in a negative spot, you might just be seeking to get to neutral, right? You're not looking to jump then to, oh my God, love and light and gratitude and joy, right? (laughs) You're not going to get there. You want to just take the next step. And so by training yourself this way and segment and tending in this way, I'm setting myself up for success to experience that, right? And so I've been even doing this on my drives to the studio before I go to class in the morning. So just rampaging about the day, like during this past week, it was, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have such powerful, potent conversations with my clients? Wouldn't it be amazing to have really transformative experiences and for them to get so much out of this group call? Wouldn't it be fun to have clear ideas of what my intuition is telling me? Wouldn't it be lovely to just hear my intuition with total ease and completely trust it? And you can see as I'm rampaging, I'm tending to lean towards questions like, wouldn't it be nice? What would it take? Wouldn't that be fun? Right? Because I'm seeking to bypass any sort of disbelief that my ego is going to have or, you know, resistance, right? This is what we're trying to avoid. We don't want our subconscious to go into resistance about it. This is how we reprogram with ease, right? And so if you notice yourself contract, then you're going to want to back off. So this is what I've been kind of doing in the morning and then I'm going to my workout class. And so that's just been so amazing. And then the evening, I've been just kind of doing something a little looser, again, doing a little bit of journaling, like rampage journaling, things like that. Now with journaling, it's not your... It's not your, you know, angsty junior high journaling, right? Where it's like, oh my God, this thing happened to me and I feel awful and all the kids hate me and I like this boy and that you'd write. It's not that because it's, that is again, putting our attention towards the things we don't want. So there may be a process where you need to let it out a little bit, right? Kind of like what is coming up so that you can be clear on what you want to reframe, like, right? Dump it, dump out the garbage, right? A little bit. But don't spend a lot of time swimming in it because then you're going to smell like it, right? Then it's going to start to really permeate your frequency. And that's not what we want. We just want clarity on what's coming up. And so that way you can reframe it for yourself in the form of a question, right? You can try affirmations. And as long as they don't create resistance or contraction in your body, then you can choose that. Um, But really, your barometer is how do you feel when you tell yourself that, right? How do you feel? Not is the thought accurate and true. It's irrelevant. What matters is how do you feel? And if you feel better, then you are on the path to creating the reality you desire. So I can tell you, I've been just doing it a couple weeks now, and I know there's some muscle memory in there because I definitely did it in the past, so there is some ease with it, and I have just been feeling so amazing the past couple days. There's been so many amazing energetic shifts, and it's just allowing me to just naturally be more creative. I... (laughs) You know, if you've listened to my car episodes that, you know, I'm continuing also to like set my intentions to manifest a few things, you know, to constantly reach for new expansions and fun. And one of them being a Porsche. And uh, so I was just, I was in Legree class the other day and I just 
had the ping to look outside into the parking lot and just see with my mind's eye, see my new car. I just saw it out there. I saw it, right? It's just like, isn't that nice? Ah, that's so fun to just see it. Like I can see it, you know, how fun will it be when it pops into reality, right? And just being like a kid using imagination. That is one freaking powerful tool is your imagination. Have you been employing it? You have it. It's free. You could use it anytime and no one will even know. So how does it get better than that, right? No one knew in class that I was thinking about that in that moment. So what if you just allowed this all to be fun? What if it was just a game? What if you lowered the stakes? What if you just took off the burden and pressure of yourself of needing to figure it all out and that with a few simple tweaks, you could strengthen your awareness, your intuition, and be able to be led from there. All right, until next time.